Well, while we, Scott, we were just kind of BSing and talking about, about you behind your back. No, I'm just kidding. That's and, great. Uh, That's the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, but we were kind of going over who plays what. So, Jerry, as far as the um, Stray Owls, you know, the outfit, the recording part of you guys or whatever, uh, just kind of tell me what you guys do. Go ahead and start first, Matt. Oh, um, well, I, I write some of the songs and play guitar and keyboards and uh, – and then, what do you do, Scott? <laughs> uh, I was going to say, don't let Matt be modest. He does a lot more than that. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, if it wasn't for Matt, this band would not be as, as uh, you know, uh, I guess I wouldn't say it wouldn't have a footprint as it does. So Matt does a lot more than just write songs. Uh, he's really the backbone as far as promotions and everything. But I write songs and I play guitar as well. So, um, you know. Don't let him fool you. <laughs> now, as, as I was listening to your guys' um, uh, Stray Owls versus Time and Space, which is a very cool title, by the way, um, I thought I detected two different lead singers. Is there one principal singer, or how does that work? Uh, well, actually, the th uh, Jerry sings a, uh, something like Hope, and... He's got a few more songs that we're going to be adding to the new album, too. So, Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so, but it, in the past, it's been mainly Scott and I. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I, I love bands that don't have just one lead singer, you know? I mean, I, I mean, there are bands I love that have one lead singer, like the Pixies and whatnot, but overall, I appreciate bands that kind of spread the singing around, you know? So that's cool. Yeah, we um. That's oh, sorry, I'm interrupt. Yeah, that's kind of how our uh, our our creative process works with uh, Matt and Jerry. Is that it's we have creative freedom, and it's like if we come up with a song or we come up with an idea, or we have a song that's been on the back burner for years. Uh, we'll just present it, and it's just you know we go okay, let's go with it. There's no um, well, I'm the singer, or you're the singer, or you're the singer. It's just if it. You know, uh, whoever wants to sing it can sing it for sure. Yeah, so that's kind of how it works. That's awesome. I was, as, as I was mentioned, I was listening a little bit to the album. Um, I think I've reviewed a, two of your guys' songs. And um, yes, and th thank you so much. Really, oh, no, I appreciate. It. No worries, man. I just, I just write about songs that get me excited. So it's easy for me. It's a very narcissistic endeavor, you know. Um, <laughs> I don't have any, it's a, it's a humble little blog. I don't have anybody to please or, uh, it's just me right now. There was three people at one time and everybody kind of jumped. Really cool blog. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And so it, it just kind of goes by my taste. So I have odd tastes and, and I, I found your guys' music really interesting because you guys kind of, um, reminded me a little bit of, I think I said in one review, kind of an uh, amalgamation of the Pixies and um, uh, Miracle Legion. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Miracle Legion. I, I, I don't remember quite what they sounded like. It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they were kind of, uh, they're kind of Polaris too, Miracle Legion and Polaris. Um, but it, that kind of, um, that kind of, um, your sound kind of, how do I put it? It, it's got a strange psychedelic feature, but it also has some humor in it. It also has some very witty, smart things to say. <laughs> oh. And I kind of appreciate that, you know. Um, when I was looking at your um, influences, um, you had, I'd seen 13th floor elevators on there. And I'd, I'd only known of them with their kind of faint connection to television. I was more familiar with television, that old band, that, and they kind of did, covered one of their songs. Yeah. So, so over the last, I don't know, I think yesterday, I started checking out 13th Floor Elevators, and they're, they're pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, I really like, um, what's the lead singer? I wrote it down, Roki? Roki. Roki. Yeah, yeah Roki, Roki, whatever, Erickson. You know, he's yeah. got a very old-school folk sensibility, the way he sings, you know. Absolutely. And, Absolutely, and I like that kind of voice too. I like I, I like voices that necessarily people wouldn't jump up and shout and say that guy is a fantastic singer, or rock singer, or whatever. I just like interesting 
voices with character. And I found that in your guys' music too, that you guys have oh, interesting, you. and you kind of just have a weird sound. You know, I, I thought of like Sparkle Horse. Um, okay, cool. You know, just a lot of that stuff. Heard a little bit of Pink Floyd in there somehow, <laughs> a little bit of the Kinks, you know. Yeah. And, and, uh, and that's what just made it really interesting. I find some of your kind of interlude songs on that, on your album interesting too, you know, where they're just these weird instrumentals. Mm -hmm. And uh, like uh, Gene Hackman, mm -hmm. it, it just, you know, like it, you do that, you're, you're going along, all of a sudden you like do that flat note. That kind of feels like you're like stepping <laughs> off, uh, feels like you're stepping off a curb, but you don't know you're gonna step off a curb, you know, that kind of feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh and it just like oh you know it, it and and i find your stuff really interesting in that way um what what kind of informs your your that album it, w first of all is that album just a collection of songs or is it kind of did you formulate the album kind of together like is it all do all the songs kind of fit that album you know what i'm saying is it kind of conceptual or it's one of those it's like the concept kind of happened after the fact, you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, yeah. we didn't really, I don't know, I'm not trying to speak for everybody, but it's the kind of thing where it's like, you don't really know until it's like, okay, maybe this is it. You know what I mean? Like, you have to kind of keep making things up and uh, until the pieces kind of fit themselves together. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's uh, kind of what we were doing. I remember the discussion. We, we I remember the day on not the date, but we were sitting there talking, and we were just like, "Well, is this is this going to be it? Is this concrete? Can we add more songs? Should we?" And we were just like, "You know, let's just uh, make this it. Let's make what it is the way it is." And we did some shuffling around. And Jerry, of course, you know the amazing like I don't know. He's got such a great ear for you know when it comes to recording and everything and writing and and uh, so I mean it just sort of kind of like Matt said sort of evolved into what it is it wasn't just it wasn't just decided immediately like th th this is it it's uh just it's one of those things like I like I said I don't want to speak for everybody but it's one of those we like to uh I don't know, keep people on their toes I guess that's what I've always felt like the band does we never really like oh this band sounds like one thing it's always like oh here's this and wait wait what, where did this come from that's kind of how I always envisioned us sounding so well it definitely to me, feels like a congruous, you know, a, a, a cohesive album. Uh, it, it doesn't sound like, you know, sometimes you listen to an, a, a group of songs, i.e. an album, and then this kind of song out of left field doesn't fit the whole, the rest of the album. And I, I always, I always feel like saying to the, the person who, who made the album, man, you should have left that song out, where I think your guys' song sounds like an album. You know, it sounds like it's, it's all together. Uh, all the songs have you know a kind of i don't know i i would say anywhere from an eerie quality to just a very psychedelic very very much uh folk rock underneath all the you know dif different aspects of shoegaze whatever one you know i hate i hate descriptions I'll, unfortunately I know what you mean. yeah unfortunately trying to be you know or, or trying to dabble in you know being a, a music reviewer as long as i have been for over 10 years you you are constantly having to use descriptors and and genres and and genres are growing too. People are are parsing each genre, you know. And I just think it's just music, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. but I I do find your stuff really interesting in that it's just it just makes your your mind think, you know. And and I I always consider songs as kind of like sonic Rorschach tests, you know, like the psychologists hold those signs up. Cool. Yeah, that's, to me, awesome. that's what I songs are. That. You, know, you put that's your great. own, you put your own stuff on them. They, yeah, about that's something. exactly it. Yeah, yep, even that's if they're it. about yeah. something, uh, people are going to put their own stuff that's deep inside. You know, whether they've been, <laughs> unfortunately, whether they've been, you know, had a hard life or a good life, they're going to put all that, all that baggage on your, on your guys' song. So when, when you have an album and it sounds like a cohesive album. It may not to somebody else, but it becomes its own entity. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you guys didn't intend that, people are going to say, oh, that's a concept album. That first song is related to the eighth song. And, you know, and, and they're going to kind of see what they want. But I think mm -hmm. that's a fascinating thing about art and about music, you know, so. 
Yeah, the idea to me, thank you so much for saying that. And I think yeah. that's, uh, that's the whole idea is for, for me and I think for the, all three of us is that we, you know, the idea is, I mean, the job is done as if not job, I wouldn't say, but, you know, if we can invoke a thought or an emotion in somebody by our music, then that's art and that's what we do and we love it. Yeah. So, I mean, thank you so much for saying that. You, oh, no, you no, can jump no. those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, so, Jerry, you sound like you do a lot of the engineering on the on the uh, recordings and whatnot and producing. Yeah. Um, once we have something started, Matt may add some synths and stuff on an iPad, um, and I fly it back into the main recording. But otherwise, most of the recording is done here at my studio. Mm -hmm. So because you guys have such an interesting sound as far as, you know, psychedelia and all that, do you guys prefer to um, create the sounds before you record them or do you do them in post, you know, so you have a little bit more flexibility? Do you, do you sound that you record the guitars clean in the box, so to speak, and then add stuff later? Or are you going through pedals and actually I, you read that you have tons of pedals and you work that way, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit of both. I think. Yeah, I think it's we definitely have pedal. You know, we have a an idea in mind. You know, for certain sounds, but then also it's like, well, let's mess around with it a little bit. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I've gotten yeah. to where um, I record a direct track besides the affected amp track, and oh, sometimes when we're mixing, we'll throw in a different, completely different sound playing the same part. You know, for a chorus or something. Oh, that's smart, yeah. That can save your ass, or if you want to clone something or is a, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. That no, is cool. Jerry's, a, uh, Jerry's a recording legend, by the way. He, uh, <laughs> he recorded, uh, like, he's recorded everyone in North Carolina at least once or twice. <laughs> really? <laughs> right? I'm just kidding. No, like, early, uh, he recorded the first Super Chunk album. Uh, really? As well as, like, merge record stuff um so you know he had breakfast with joey ramone um, <laughs> <laughs> jerry's a lot more interesting than we are well that's awesome I, i'm telling you if you have somebody who's good you know good in engineering and producing that is like a godsend because that's tough stuff to do and you have to have a certain mentality to be able to do that um I've, I've dabbled in some music myself and I hate that part of it, you know, because I've done it myself too. And uh, I always really um, admire people who are good producers, number one, and good engineers and are able to kind of just kind of have that vision, you know, so, so that's, that's great. So, so you're the Nigel Godrich of the bunch, I guess is what you're saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah. I definitely enjoy it. It's weird. You know, I enjoy it as much as playing, I guess, but it, I think of it as part of the same thing. Well, like I said, you're a godsend because it's it's so much fun for somebody that it is, isn't into that, who's written a song to kind of go, can you do this? Can you do this? And then you just have to do it, you know? Because, you know, a lot of that stuff makes a huge difference um, in terms of, um, and, and I find your guys' uh, sound I get a lot of submissions where every fucking thing is up front, you know, it's just like an assault of just too much. And I always tell people, you know, pick three or four things and <laughs> bring them up front and then, you know, work with the, the stuff spatially or whatever. But um, that's really hard to do and you have to kind of know what you're doing and know your DOS program and all that stuff. And a lot of people don't, you know, they just, I think what a lot of people do actually is they put out their stuff before it's ready to, for people to hear it because they get up so excited. So they kind of put a bad representation of their sound. Um, do you guys play, uh, well, pre pandemic, did you guys, do you guys play live a lot? We as, were. As much oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. And, well, yeah. I think Matt was going to say as much as we could, right. you know, juggling work and family and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do, do you feel your live sound? Were you happy with your live sound as opposed to what ends up on the, in the studio recording? Or yeah, I mean it's a little bit different. You know, there are, it's a little more stripped down, but um, a lot of the songs that's where they start. And, right. You know, it's fun. 
I really miss it. I really miss just practice, just hanging out and, you know, that kind of stuff. But, oh, yeah, yeah. that's just um, – did – I didn't look at the liner notes or anything, but was most of this, most of these songs all recorded in um, this year or was it in 2019 and then put out in 2020? Uh, recorded last year and then put okay. out this year. And then your process with um, basically, as you said, you all kind of contribute in the writing. Um, oh, I love that title, Lower Case of the Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that song, I thought that song, when I listened to it, it reminded me of like, this is going to sound weird, but if the Beatles and Aleister Crowley got together, you know, oh, that's wow. what it sounded like, <laughs> it sounded like demonic Beatles. I mean, it was just, that's awesome. <laughs> it, it, it just, I just like, was like, what is this, you know? And and I noticed too, like I, I, I jotted down some notes, um, Snake in the Grass, like I like a lot of your stuff too, because within the songs you'll have kind of, I mean, every song does this, but I think with you, I, for some reason, I noticed these kind of circular patterns, you know, like lead, lead lines that kind of, you, you cobble this like pattern together and it just kind of repeats through the song. And I just, I just liked it. I didn't make it through the, the entire album yet because I just started listening yesterday. Uh, from what I can hear, you guys are artists, you know, there's a difference between somebody who's trying to just make music as commerce, and, I, and I'm sure you guys would love for your music to sell a lot, but what, what is your focus? Are you trying to, um, you know, kind of take the band out on the road type of thing, or are you, or are you trying to just do all studio stuff and trying to get your stuff out there? Um, before I, you answer that, I think your stuff and I don't know if you've gone this route, but because your, st because your stuff is as unique as it is, and it's not regular pop stuff, it's, it's not very, you know, you're not jumping on, on uh, bandwagons. To me, it doesn't sound like that. You know, you, it's not full of indie tropes. Um, I think a good place to at least push your music towards is filmmakers. I would, I would try to get on message boards that have up and coming filmmakers um you know the the huge explosion of content that's needed netflix and amazon and th they all need interesting music for th for their projects and i could see and hear your your kind of music in in a lot of film stuff and i hope you're if you haven't considered that i hope you can figure out to push it to some companies that do sync deals or whatever because you know you're not you don't make admittedly, um, you know, pop music and, and, uh, which, which I'm thankful for, but, uh, you got to find all the niche, niche people, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so I hope, no, you that's a, that. that's something we, we really have not, con yeah, I mean, I've considered it, I've thought about it, but I haven't pursued. So no, I mean, thank you for saying that. Uh, that's a, that's a good kick in the pants. So like, you know what, you're right. I should, <laughs> maybe that's worth a try. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I definitely, um, if I run into anybody who's looking for that sort of thing, I'll mention you guys. Um, I just, um, how long have you guys been together in this form? Or how, how long has Stray Owls been together? So I've been with them about three yeah. years. Is that about right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think and so. We were uh, around a couple years before that, maybe three. Uh, about 2014, Scott. Is that about right, you think? Yeah, 2015. I think so. Well, you and I, as, as sort of like writing things back and forth, I mean, it's been going on since like 2010, just throwing ideas back and forth. But as a collective, a cohesive uh, band, I would say probably about the end of our first album, whenever, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jerry was uh, kind of helping us through that and, you know, kind of record the album and uh, doing the drums on that. And then from there, it was just, uh, it became, I think it was around 2016, 2017, when we became what we are now for sure yeah i think so yeah jerry played uh, jerry's first show uh playing drums was for the album release show for our first album and um i mean it just felt great and you know he played on the album and recorded it and then we had a few other shows lined up that he wasn't going to play on but then we asked him you know if he'd want to play on some more and i don't know it just it just got to the point where it didn't feel like we didn't want to play without Jerry. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> that no, that no, I know I agree, and that like I just I think our chemistry, uh, us as three people in a room, I just find that uh, I don't know. I really enjoy because I, I myself am a bit of a, an introvert. I mean, most. I mean, I guess quote unquote artists are, but myself as a person, um, I can sit in a room with the other these two guys and not talk about music. We can talk about anything. I'll walk in a room just like right before practice and talk about a sign I saw on the side of the road. And we all talk about it for five minutes or we can talk about anything. And then from there we can collaborate on music. And that's why I really enjoy what we do as a trio. It's really a really good thing. So. Well, I mean, it's great. It's great when you, you know, like-minded people get together and, and just kind of in the rehearsal space is when you come up with ideas and when songs start t changing shape and it, it, it's an exciting thing. As somebody who really likes divergent music, that's what American Pancake's all about, has always been like different music. It's slim, you know, it's um, all the music sounding very cookie cutter, very much in the pop realm and very much as you know as soon as um arctic monkeys becomes big then everybody sounds like arctic monkeys exactly <laughs> you know yeah I mean? they're it's like yeah once once was something is a, a unique sound everybody sounds and every and all it's all about at that point it's all about selling and making music and or not I'm making money which is i'm still not a bad thing but um i think uh i know what you mean yeah it's like once one thing sounds like something it's like it no longer is a unique you know yeah, yeah so and making money is great uh obviously but um i think that apart from even making money i think just people there's a real lemming mentality you know so uh everybody just follows wh whomever somebody said that that drum sound reminds me of yes or something so I, I went and listened to close to the edge which i hadn't heard for 20 years probably um so just different stuff and, and i myself i mean i grew up listening to somewhat more of a you know i wouldn't say mainstream well mainstream but sort of under the radar at the time for me as a like in elementary school i was listening to like early Metallica and more and more metal stuff, you know? And, uh, and as I got, you know, older, uh, it, it got more interesting. Like I started listening to more other, like more bands that were, um, I don't know, that Matt and or Jerry were introduced me to, like Nutri Milk Hotel or Granddaddy. But uh, this week I've been listening to like Roger Miller or um, uh, just uh, trying to think of another one. Um, um, we have a couple of Elliot Smith uh, songs, like Spotify stuff, just sort of kind of shuffle it and just see what happens. But yeah, Roger Miller's been on my mind a lot lately, so that's about it. So, <laughs> well, I I hate Spotify because they pay so they they pay their uh, artists so poorly. But I yeah. Yeah. value um, what you said about it in terms of broadening your horizon with music, and you just either Spotify or YouTube, if you start listening to one thing and it's just kind of ping pongs to another and you start discovering all this stuff. Yeah, it's fascinating because I, I, I'm into all kinds of music. Um, and it, I'll, I'll go through periods of where I'm very much into um, indie rock or post punk or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. And then all of a sudden I'll start listening to folk and country Western a little bit. I hate modern country. Bro country, all that. It just makes oh. me want to vomit. But yeah. But the the roots, the, the classic stuff is really, really good. Um and then even I thought I never would, but I've even lately been listening to some more, you know, Neo Soul and and kind of uh uh things that are tinged with a little bit of hip hop, which uh, is surprising for me from my background. <laughs> but but um no, it's all good. Um and huh. metal and Led Zeppelin. I used to be a Led Zeppelin freak, you know. So, um, in fact, I, I mentioned Jimmy Page in one of in the review. I said that you you, you guys <laughs> some of the lead stuff that Jimmy Page would have never thought. Of. <laughs> it's just so, That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's just so gloriously oddball, you know. Because I'm a huge Radiohead fan too, and I like sounds. As I've as I've gotten older, I like sounds more than patterned leads. You know, I like just good guitars that make interesting sounds not necessarily even a melody or a lead line or whatever i just appreciate um the sound aspect um and doing it on a guitar an electric guitar as opposed to a synth you know which unfortunately synth could 
kind of emulate anything now, but uh, um, something like Hope, which I think is the one, Jerry, is that the one that you say? Yeah. Um, and maybe that's the one I detected a different voice and I thought it might have been Scott. Just my stupid thinking, thinking, oh, the drummer's not going to sing, you know, which is dumb. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, a lot of drummers sing. Um, but the something like Hope, I jotted down Flaming Lips. I don't know if you guys are fans of Flaming Lips or not. Wow. I but never even put the, cor I never knew the, the correlation until you said it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry. Continue. It's Sorry. Very pronounced something in just the mood, maybe not exactly the sound, something a little bit in, in Jerry's voice, um, some inflections that kind of made me think of, of Flaming Lips. Um, and God, they've been around a long time. They have been. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I, they put a new album out yesterday, and uh, it, I, I haven't heard it, but it's supposed to be great. And honestly, they put out, they, they seem to put out a new album that's, like, really good every 10 years, it seems like, yeah. um, at least in my opinion. But, uh, I yeah, mean, the, grayer, the grayer he gets, the, the, the better their music gets. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Oh, remember yeah, yeah. He's, he's uh, <laughs> I think he just turned 60. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I got into them kind of late, I think. Like, kind of when Soft Bulletin came out, that one. Um, had Superman on it, um, which I think he wrote about the death of his father. That, that song got to me, man. That was a, a great. Um, but, for, but for some reason, when I heard something like Hope, it really gave me a, a Flaming Lips tone. And again, it may not even sound like them. That's just me. You know, it's me. Like I said, the Rorschach test, I, I threw, throw that on there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you guys may not agree or whatever, but um, but it, in any event, whether it has a flaming lips quality or not, you guys share in that kind of same DNA, you know, where you guys have an interesting way of making music and kind of um, turning your feeling or poetry or whatever into music. It, it, it falls into that kind of, you know, flaming lips, you know, they fall into that kind of askew weird zone, you know, for me, just like the Pixies and just like a lot of um a lot of bands that i that i really um am really into like pavement i don't know if you guys have ever looked at listen to pavement yes, yeah. um yes you know, absolutely yeah um well um not to cut you off but not, not your array of uh you know your music t musical taste but i mean just the way that you you um i'll just say use words i mean I mean, it's immaculate to read your stuff. I mean, I, I, I seriously, I mean, it's like, it just grabs the reader. Even if you, you know, you may not be writing about us or anybody, I can just read it and just want to keep reading it until the end because of the way that you write it. So I think you do every band, you know, justice by how you write too. So I think it's amazing you use uh, simile, or, you know, you just use simulations or similar versions of other things to uh, make the band sound. Or, I, I don't know. You do a great job. So thank you for that. So oh, I'll let you continue. I, I appreciate it. I am very well a, said. I'm a weird um, uh, reviewer. I don't. I basically write about how the song makes me feel. Again, narcissistically, narcissistically, <laughs> um, as opposed to I'm not very good. I don't enjoy writing about all the. Um, uh, there, you guys change places. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I don't I really. Um, um, tend to enjoy writing kind of bio stuff about bands. Like they played this, they did that, then they put out this. I just like to write about um, kind of where the song takes me or makes me feel. Um, I find it a lot easier too. I, I, I'm not, I'm kind of scatterbrained. So I don't like, I get very um, nervous if I'm going to mess up some information, if there's some like biographical information I'm supposed to jot down. That's why on, on every review I, I put all that presto press notey stuff at the bottom, so people can, um, if they want to go there, they can go there and find out about what you. Did. Yeah. Um, no, it's great. It really, I mean, yeah, you put your own stamp on it, and I mean, mm -hmm. you know, people want to put their own stamp on the music, so it's that you know, that's that's yeah. Great. I think Matt, you said, Matt and I had mentioned, uh, I think the first one, I think it was uh, Dislocation, I can't remember. Um, it was it was really nice to hear how, I, I think, I can't quote it verbatim, but you said something about um, it 
not broken, but it's not fixed or something like that. And I was like, that is so great. I love, I, I just love that metaphor. It was such a good one. And I, and I just, I don't know. I really appreciated it. I, I, I told Matt, I told Matt that too. And I believe you agreed as well. Of course, it was really, really out there and I liked it. So yeah. Well, I, I probably was trying to get, it's kind of a cliche thing. A lot of people say, but you know, uh, a perfectly imperfect, you know, that whole thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you guys, um, I hate overproduced over, you know, perfectly quantized, just, you know, people make their music so perfect sometimes and uh, that it sounds soulless, you know, and, and you, you, you suck all the emotion out of it. It's one thing that a bad producer will do. You know, I've known bands in uh, SoCal when I was covering a lot of the punk bands who their raw, like, demo tapes were fantastic and then they found somebody pr to produce them and they just sucked all the all the punch out of them you know and uh you you were lucky to have jerry because jerry you know sh shares your aesthetic and he's doing it for you but all of a sudden you guys might find some dude who just you know he's a top producer maybe but he, he may do the worst thing for you guys you know um oh yeah we don't <laughs> but don't lose don't lose jerry man that guy's like <laughs> yeah jerry to, to me I, I mean he does a lot for i mean uh you know i just to watch him as i mean as an engineer it's like watching him play the drums as well i mean it really i i mean he uh it's it's extremely uh it's nice that you know he does the recording and he does you know he does all the things that he does but i guess like he was saying earlier he sees the uh at of course, I don't want to speak for him, but he sees the recording as another part of the, the process of writing music. And I don't think by any means is that he, um, you know, uh, I don't know. I, it's, I don't know. It's great to have Jerry, you know, with uh, all three of us are all together. It's just really great. And, uh, you know, even if we didn't record Wait, it. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't go mean ahead. to. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead, Matt. You're good. <laughs> well, we watched you work, Jerry, and, you know, you know, uh, that you see the bigger picture of things and bouncing ideas off of you and Scott and it's just uh, I don't know it's everything, everything I could have ever asked for you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. where do you guys um, you know do the recording is that one of your guys' house or do you go to a, a separate space or a, rec a recording space or where do you do the recordings <laughs> My house is set up as the recording studio. Like, oh, great. The living room is the control room, and a big back room is the main studio room. You know, we use other rooms for vocals and stuff like that. Awesome. So you kind of be able to isolate stuff and. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, is it like set up all the time? <laughs> is it just like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> I, that, that's the way to I, do I did it. it. I did it for a living for quite a while, for about 25 years or so. And it slowed down enough that I had to get a day job. So um, for a long time, yeah, it was, um, you know, it was out there. Yeah. I got to ask this, well, Jerry, how many mics do you throw on a, on a, a drum kit to record it? Um, I, I, my favorite is three. This Glenn Johns thing, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. uh, over and front and side, and I'll usually put a mic on each drum as well. So it depends on how quick it, we're moving and stuff. And for somebody else that may not like that room sound as much as I do, they w they may want the close mic sounds. So if I'm doing it for hire, I usually add more. Right. I, I just had to ask because I'm kind of a nerd that way when it comes to stuff. But <laughs> I, I was, I was, uh, I, I put out a couple stuff on Bandcamp, and I was, um, I was in Georgia, and I used a um, LA drummer, Chris McGellan, uh, plays for this kind of uh, punk indie band, indie rock band called the uh, Pocket Rockets. <laughs> and he goes, I'll, I'll uh, he he approached me to to do drums on some songs and. And he goes, I got a great two mic technique. I go, two mic? Nobody just uses two mics. <laughs> and he, he swore. He goes, no, I got a great two mic technique. 
And uh, that's what he did, and it sounded okay. You know, it maybe it wasn't the way I would do it, but, you know, he was helping me, so I wasn't going to uh, look the gift horse in the mouth. But, but uh, <laughs> I've always been impressed with people who know how to record drum kits because it's not easy. Um, that you're going to be working on as far as new singles or EPs, or you're just going to be kind of pushing this? Um, but uh, just not being able to play shows, it's yeah, just, uh, you know, an odd It's, mm -hmm. you know, not being able to promote it. But, uh, you know, I think we'll push this a little bit more. And But we have, uh, I think we have a, a covers EP that we're working on now. Just to, you know, we've been trading files back and forth. Uh, some uh, Beatles and Mud Honey and Jerry just recorded a CCR song that we're going <laughs> to start messing around. So, you know, a little bit of everything. Um, but we've also... Uh, we've got a couple of other ones, like originals, that we've been messing around with. We haven't really been able to get in the same room. Um, I'm still really quarantining because I have a uh, wife and kids and, you know, want to keep the kids as far away from everyone as possible. Sure. Um, really. But, uh, no, that's, that's kind of the idea. Before, before we go, because I need to listen to the rest of that album, and, and I'll pick whatever songs, because you, you guys will end up on the podcast enough to where i'll play the whole album eventually but it, thank it's, you yeah oh, no problem is um what would be your favorite like if you were, i don't want to say favorite because you don't want to you know you, they're all your babies whatnot but as far as the kind of the single of the album like or the two singles on the on the album what two songs do you think would be the ones that you'd consider like the singles um my personal opinion would probably be jet lag would be definitely one of them for sure. I mean, I mean, I, I know it's not like, well, we wrote, well, you know, wrote the song, but you know, I, you know, but I personally, you know, I could listen to jet lag and go, I, I truly enjoy listening to this song. So that's my opinion. So. Um, I would say words or jet and jet lag. Yeah. I mean, those, I, I was what do thinking you think? Words. Yeah. I was thinking words too. And I think, I, I think I wrote about words. You did. Thank yeah. you. Uh, what about you, Jerry? Do you have any words uh, or <laughs> words? Or just, <laughs> do you have any um, songs? I, I, yeah, like dislocation and, and jet lag or the two that jump. Um, if you really want to be ambitious, the bipolar void is a lot of fun. I don't think I got to that one yet. That one. That yeah. one's out there. Yeah, it's, it's out <laughs> there. If it's out there, I can, I'm going to check it out because that's what I like. <laughs> uh, and, I, man, I, Jerry, man, I really like that Something Like Hope. Cool, I, thanks. It just hit me just like a Flaming Lips song. I mean, I just, like, I dig that. I'll have to play that eventually on there for sure. Very cool, guys. Nice to meet you. And um, yeah, It's really nice to meet you. You too. Absolutely. Well, no problem, man. It was great talking to you. Um. I wish I would have known of you guys sooner when I was in Georgia and I probably would have just like, but back then you were guys would probably turn, you know, not turn, but, but playing around, I would have driven up and uh, checked you guys out. Um, what's funny about Miracle Legion. Um, I actually saw them at the 40 watt. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. The legendary 40 watt in uh, Athens, Georgia. And uh, they, that's they awesome. Were, they were putting on a show and I, and you know, they, they kind of go through these re reunion phases cause they are an older band, but they were awesome, man. Mm -hmm. They had, they had a, um, a, a huge audience that knew like every song and they were singing along. And I mean, it was really cool. Um, mm -hmm. I'd never been to a venue in North Carolina. Uh, <laughs> where do you guys play? What's your favorite That's place to play over there? There's a bar in Raleigh that's not real big, but it sounds good. And it always, yeah. you know, has a good Slim. crowd. And it's just fun to play. Called Slims. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There's Slims. There's Cat's Cradle. There's The Cave. Um, the, uh, the one place that we just played at in um, uh, Monster Cave was really cool. I mean, that oh, yeah. was a tight little bar uh, in uh, Winston-Salem. Yeah. How's the scene over there? Is it uh, like, do you like the scene in, in, in your area, the music scene? Yeah, there's lots of variety and just a whole lot of people making music. Um, but 
yeah, the past, you know, five months have been pretty nutty. It's horrible. Absolutely. It's horrible. I just heard somebody in relation to the pandemic um, on the radio this morning. Um, sometimes I listen to talk radio. There's, there's a show on there where they talk about computers and things that I like to listen to. And on the news segment, they had some officials saying that they didn't think that things were going to get back to normal till the end of next year. And I'm like, what the hell? Sure. Yeah, that, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I, I believe it. <laughs> but at this point, what's to believe, you know, who knows? <laughs> so we just all have to adapt and kind of keep going with it, you know, for sure. So, yeah. Mm. And with the economy the way it is and everything, are you guys good as far as you guys all, your jobs stayed intact through this whole pandemic and everything? Fortunately. Yeah, I've been pretty steady. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Actually, I just got myself a job. I just uh, graduated uh, from a, um, a technical school uh, for a, I'm a forestry technician, which I just got the job about a month and a half ago. And uh, it's great because I don't have to really be around anybody. It's not the issue. I'm always out there working and being in the woods and being by trees and stuff. So it's great. I have no complaints whatsoever. So, I mean, I hate that for people who like who have to work in on the front line, should I say. But, uh, yeah, uh, everything's great. So, absolutely. And oh, man, we, you know, I'd like to see could play more together. I wish I could be in the same room with the guys and you know play music. That's really you know my passion. When we're all we're not working, we would be doing that. So, but it's just yeah, that's the one thing. It's just like come on, you know, let's let's hurry up and get back to normal. So, well, the the first concerts that are going to start happening again are going to be outside. So maybe you guys will be playing inside a four. So that might be a, <laughs> that might be a better way to go. In uh, sure. California, you've probably seen on the news. We, we've had uh, 23 million acres burn. I know. I, and this year. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Don't even. I, uh, the whole thing with the fires and stuff. It's, it's yeah. so. It's, it, I, I, how, I, it's tragic. It really is. But um, a lot of people, I mean, through the history of our, of, you know, of, of America, it's always been like, you know, let's exploit it. But wait, now let's not touch it. Don't touch it. Oh, it's on fire touch it make it better it's like well we've been trying to tell you to make it better for years and now it's so i don't know i, I just hate to see that it's not anywhere near you right now you're located where again well it's actually this um one fire is close enough to where there's just ashes over everything like, uh, oh my god it's, it's horrible um and then i drove into la and it was less so so the, the fire that uh is near us is in in this town uh, called Monrovia, mm. and it's just literally the sky is just overcast looking, but it's just smoke in the air. Which yeah, smoke in the air. Has his yellow shirts on. Yeah, they say actually helps because it uh, uh, reduces the heat and and creates more humidity. But um, the fire's been it's at six percent, and it, it just it's been burning for like three weeks, you know, and. Uh, and then I have friends in Oregon, you know, they had like 900,000 acres over there burning up and then, you know, Washington, uh -oh. that's it. so it's a bad on the West Coast, man. It's bad for, uh, for fi forest fires right now. That's, uh, that's tragic, but I'm, I hope that uh, you and everyone else stay safe over there for sure. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're just dealing with it, you know, but uh, hey, I appreciate it. Have a good rest of the weekend. And, uh, you too. Thank you. I hopefully talk to you again. All right, sounds good. Thank that you so much for your time, Rob. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye. You guys are great. Bye. Okay, Thanks. Bye. 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 bye.